Welcome to a tour of Entwine. In this video, I'm going to review the concept of arrays within JavaScript. So remember, when we work with Sugarcube, if we're working with its macros, working with its variables, or working with anything else within Sugarcube, we are always, always also using JavaScript at the same time. In fact, Sugarcube defines itself in relationship to JavaScript as syntactical sugar. That is, it is things on top of the existing web language of JavaScript we're using within a web browser. Anything we can do in JavaScript, we can also do in Sugarcube, because Sugarcube is simply sitting on top of JavaScript, so to speak. So one of the things we can use are the existing data structures within JavaScript. One of these is arrays. An array is a structure of data, a data structure, where it is a collection of values where the order is important, and we access things based on its order starting at zero. So if we want to know where something is, we access it by its position, often called its index, starting at zero. We define arrays within JavaScript with a single opening square bracket and a single closing square bracket where all the values in the collection are separated by a comma. We see an example right here of a temporary variable example using the set macro. We see a single opening square bracket, a single closing square bracket, and values separated by a comma, so one, two, three values. Now, if I wanted the first value in this sequence, I would use zero. In JavaScript, arrays begin in zero. In other languages, they begin in one, but in JavaScript, they begin in zero. And I access it in the variable that contains it using a single opening and single closing square bracket with its index or its position. So for the first value, they begin at zero. This would be example, and right here, zero. So if I go ahead and run example one, build in play, we see high, which is the first thing in the collection. Again, first entry starting at zero for the first position or the first index. Now, Sugarcube being built on JavaScript adds some extra things. There are some extra methods we can use with values that contain arrays in Sugarcube that we can't normally do within JavaScript. And this can be incredibly helpful because these have been added for common tasks we might want to do. There are a number of methods that are added to arrays within Sugarcube, and I refer you to the Sugarcube documentation for all of these. I'm going to highlight just two of them in this video to keep it fairly short. So two of the things that I think are important methods that are part of arrays in Sugarcube is random and shuffle. The random method allows us to pull out a random entry from the array and shuffle, as might be guessed from its name, shuffles the entries around. So first let's look at random, then we'll look at shuffle. I'll close this by talking about one of the methods that JavaScript provides that's incredibly useful for working with arrays. So first let's look at random. So right here I have an array, A through E. Notice of course, commas separating all of these, a single opening, single closing square bracket, and then I'm using random right here as a method. So in JavaScript, anytime we put a function that's part of an object or part of a data structure, which is just an object in JavaScript, we can use different methods as part of those. In Sugarcube, we can use random with array. Now, don't get too confused about this because random does not exist outside of Sugarcube when working with JavaScript but it does exist inside Sugarcube. So as long as we're working with JavaScript inside Sugarcube, we can use this directly. This will give us a random entry, some random thing within this. So either A, B, C, D, or E, and of course notice I'm using a temporary variable entry right here with the underscore. So if we move over to example two, build and play, we get C. If I refresh it, we get B. If I refresh it again, we get E and we could keep going. We're always going to get some random thing within the collection, within the array provided. And this is an incredibly useful method that Sugarcube adds on top of JavaScript. Very, very useful. The other thing I want to highlight that Sugarcube adds is the ability to shuffle entries. So if we have right here A through E, but we want to mix those up, notice I have right here shuffle, right here as part of the same thing I used in example two. So if I move this over to example three and play, we would get C, D, E, B, A. 
And we could just keep shuffling every time we revisit this passage, it would again shuffle these. And that's an incredibly useful method that does in one line of code what would be several lines of code in JavaScript by itself. Now, the other thing I want to note as part of this passage, and I skipped over it when I was explaining this, is I'm using a special macro right here called run, and I'll cover this in a future video. But if you're ever in a case where you want to use a particular method that's part of an object or part of a data structure, but you don't care about what happens as a result, that is, you're not setting a value that we often see when using the set macro, you can use the run macro to run a single line of code. Again, I'll talk about it more in a future video. But in this case, I didn't want the result. I just wanted it to shuffle itself. And then I was going to show it down here, which is what I did. So finally, let's end with a very useful method that exists within JavaScript itself, but not necessarily added by Sugarcube. So keep in mind, random and shuffle are added by Sugarcube, but this one includes as part of arrays within JavaScript itself. Often, we don't know what's in an array. We might get it from some external source. We might be pulling data from some other website, or we might be processing that, some data, and we simply don't know what's in it. We often want to know, though, is something that we do know in this collection, in this array. The method includes is really useful for that because it will return either true or false. So in this case, I have an array and I know what's in it because I'm setting it up, but I may not know what's in it. And I'm asking, does or here, if example includes A is true, and if it is, yep, the array includes A. So this can be incredibly useful if, again, you don't know what's in the array, you're getting it from some other source, or you're doing some other data manipulation on it, and you want to test, is this thing in this collection, in this array? If example includes A, then is true. We would see this right here, combining it with the if macro. So if I play example four, build and play, yep, the array includes A. And again, incredibly helpful, if you don't necessarily know what's in some array, you can test. Is this in, a, in the array? Is this other thing in the array? And then do something correspondingly with it. So in this video, I have covered the concept, or at least reviewed the concept, of arrays within JavaScript. There is much more we could talk about for arrays in JavaScript. It is a somewhat complex topic. It is one of a few number of data structures available within JavaScript itself. It has a kind of considerable history. But at least in this video, I want to cover creating arrays, two of the methods, of the many methods that Sugarcube adds. We looked at random, we looked at shuffle, as well as one of the provided methods for arrays within JavaScript includes. There is, again, much, much more to learn about arrays in JavaScript if this is your first time hearing of this concept. But if you're just seeing this video, you can use them to create a collection of data one opening square bracket, one closing square bracket with data separated by commas. We can get random things from it. We can also shuffle it as well as test for includes. And again, there are many, many more methods provided by JavaScript itself and a handful of different things added by Sugarcube that's worth looking at the Sugarcube documentation. But arrays are an incredibly powerful data structure within JavaScript. And remember, every time we use Sugarcube, we're always, always, also using JavaScript at the same time as Syntactical Sugar and SugarCube 2.36. Thanks for watching.